So yeah. here, the Lenara Connect, uh, at, uh, you had the, you were talking something during just after the open hours. What, what are you talking about? Yeah, so I gave a session after open hours on a new 96 boards initiative that um, we've been working on called Open Source Academics. Now, uh, Open Source Academics is kind of, you know, what it sounds like, trying to bring academics to an open source ecosystem. But the goal for us, at least one of our goals in particular, when you're thinking about industry and academics, uh, in my personal experience, and it seems to be from the experience of people I've spoken with, is that there is somewhat of a disconnect. Uh, when you're in uh, when you're in school and when you're working with uh, you know the, the regular curriculum that you're usually on, especially in engineering, it seems that uh, you're not always working on the technologies that you should be working on, uh, you know, for industry. And so the goal here is, at least from a 96 board standpoint, is to try and get the, the right technologies into the hands of the students. Now, I'm only talking about one facet of this, right? Because open source academics does plan on tackling many other issues. But um, let's see if I can try to summarize these. Now, looking at this repository, or this org, I should say, it's so github.com forward slash OS academics, um, you can see that we have five separate components. Um, one component is the home component, and this basically is the landing page of the, of the org. It allows you to branch out and experience all of the different other aspects of it. Now, you'll also find uh, an executive summary, a roadmap, which is a little bit out of date right now, hopefully to be updated in the next quarter. Um, but that is your place to get started. Now, let's kind of go up the list here. University. University was what I was kind of first talking about. Um, how do we start to get the right technologies into the hands of the students and into the hands of the professors to create the right curriculum that's needed to gear these students up for actual work experience. Now this is also to the benefit of industry. Now if you think about it, um, a lot of money is spent and a lot of time is spent in ramp up periods for new hires. If you're able to get the right technologies into the hands of the students and have the professors teach the right curriculum with an influence from industry incentivizing the academic side of things, you could be not only helping the students get jobs, but also lowering, your, lowering their barrier of entry into that particular industry. So a very nice aspect here. What we're trying to do is we're trying to set up a nice user interface, nice platform for people to start collaborating on in this regard. When you look at training and workshops, it's somewhat similar, but not to such a high standard. So, you know, when it comes to university level curriculum, there is going to be a lot more needed to make sure that that curriculum is actually um, usable in universities. So we'll need to work a lot closely with universities and professors to make this actually happen. This will most likely be the, the uh, component of this initiative that takes the longest to achieve. And it is one of our biggest goals. Now, one more aspect of this before I jump to these other ones is, uh, you know, you see a lot of very nice universities out there and you see a lot of very passionate professors. And these are the best kind, right? The best professors are the passionate ones that want to teach you. But a lot of times um, the professors don't have the resources that they need to teach the things that they want to teach. And, uh, you know, creating this digital file cabinet in an open source ecosystem can definitely bring this type of um, curriculum and uh, uh, forward to the professors that want to teach it. So essentially creating this digital file cabinet, allowing professors who want to teach, teach to teach things that um, they might not have had access to. Um, and if maybe they find something that was wrong with it, they could also contribute fixes and then of course just like the open source world works, grow a more robust curriculum and that's also a good thing. Training and workshops, I'm not going to dive too much into that. These are a lot more easier to attain. You want to go teach something at a makerspace or a fab lab. You want to get involved uh, in any sort of workshop, in-house training. Um, you know, hosting your curriculum in an open source way could allow other places to use it, as well as building up and, of course, creating a more robust curriculum for your workshops or your training sessions. Now, one that I found interesting, and this is going to be the one that most likely hits the repository first, is the bounties component. And the bounties component can be looked at simply as a, a um, almost infinite unending hackathon, right? Okay, so now I mentioned I want to create a situation where industry can incentivize students and academics, professors, let's just say all academics, to contribute back things and work with the technologies from industry. 
The bounty system allows industry, and more specifically 96 Board's partners, but of course everyone is welcome, um, to pick a technology, pick a, an amount of time they feel is, is uh, necessary to complete this task, or I should say assign a task and pick a time. Pick a technology, <laughs> start over. Pick a technology, assign a task, and then assign a time to complete that task, and then incentivize. By incentivizing and giving these uh, students or professors something to complete, you allow them to almost compete for the incentive. This is a bounty. Now, what happens here is we're generating a way for, say, students, and this is just one use case, students to actually build up their digital portfolio to get experience in things that they would have not other that they would have otherwise not had the opportunity to get in get, get familiar with this lowers again the ramp up time for, for students who are trying to get into um, industry but also when you're looking at freshman and sophomore level uh, students especially in the college area the college um, range uh, they're usually trying to find internships that are taken up by you know the more experienced students and so instead of uh, instead of feeling down and out you know turn to open source turn to open source academics and find a way to contribute find a way to build on a project or help an industry partner out by completing one of their bounties and maybe you know uh, what is it cashing in on one of their incentives so um, we're still working out the, you know, the details on how the incentives will be uh, divvied out, what kind of incentives they'll be. Could be something from, you know, getting your hand on the technology, getting a chance to just keep what you worked on. So like you delivered it, you delivered your code, you delivered your project, your videos, whatever it was that the, that the industry was asking for. You learned a lot in doing so. And then you get to keep the technology you worked on. Very nice. Could be an interview. So what, what, is, uh, what is the part that... The, that Open Source Academics or uh, Nice Boards or Linara is doing here, and uh, uh, who's going to join? Who's supposed to join this this project? Well, so right now it's very much in its early stages. Um, there's a few of our partners who have showed interest in wanting to participate in this, and there are several universities who have showed interest in wanting to participate in this. But in a way, it is somewhat the chicken and the egg. We're trying to figure out how we can, you know, plant this initial seed um, and and watch it grow, right? Because, you know, again, this is this give and take between industry and academics. Um, this is uncharted territory for for me in particular, and uh, we're really looking forward to seeing how it how it can grow. Now, I will say, um, what I would really like to see is uh, the initial push being made from the university. So you know, generating a first stream of uh, generating the first stream of, of curriculum around already accessible technology uh, will really give this uh, or really be the catalyst for this to take off because industry will really start to see the functionality of this and start to utilize it. Um, I know that on a 96 boards on 96 boards behalf. I plan on launching some of the first bounties once the system is up and running. Um, I will be launching some bounties and uh, we will hopefully see that take off. So that means there could be a bounty about getting something to work on these and then somebody would try to get the bounty and then if they succeed they win it? Yeah, so essentially that's that's basically that in a nutshell that's it. Yeah. So you would be assigned a you know there is a there's criteria. You fulfill the criteria for the bounty, you get you get it, right? And so that's the system that we're trying to set up and we're trying to have it ongoing. But the beautiful thing about this, right, is that it's not just 96 boards. We're really hoping that industry latches onto this and give them a nice platform, a nice interface to use so that they can post bounties all across and figure out the ways that they want to start working with this. Yeah. Um, I should.